Uh, here we get an actual view of the site now. So uh, that out there is the Tevatron ring, the, the highest energy ring. Okay. And mainly what you can see is the cooling pond, uh, mm -hmm. which is slightly inside the radius of the accelerator ring. The accelerator ring, again, is under this mound of dirt. You okay. can see pipes running along the top of it. And the two big detectors for this are the C CDF detector, which is the orange building there. Okay, see the orange building off in the distance, and I'll point right along here. You'll see just like conduit pipes with dirt piled on top of it. That's where the actual equipment is. That's right, and the beam line's about, I think, about 20 feet below that. Uh, the level of grade there for radiation protection. And then the blue building across the ring, almost directly across from us, is the okay. zero detector. Let's see if I can even do enough of a... You might be able to see some detail. I'm doing a zoom on it. And on a very clear day, you would be able to see downtown Chicago oh, okay. <laughs> rising in the distance there, but it's not... Uh, I think you can actually detect some large buildings sticking up. I don't know if that's... It's kind of in the haze. Yeah. Maybe. But we are fairly close to Chicago. <clears throat> so this ring is one kilometer in radius. And you are still technically the largest operating cyclotron in the world right now until they fix the Large Hadron Collider, we, right? We, we have the highest energy collisions. The CERN site has accelerated a single beam to a... Uh, uh, to to similar energies now, but they have not produced beam-beam uh, collisions yet. So, okay. that, so we still have the highest energy collisions. Uh, now, last time I was change quickly. Yeah, that's that's true. Nobody's on top for long. I heard last time too that you guys are still um, pouring through data and doing tests. That maybe you actually may be the ones that detected the large uh, uh, the Higgs boson. There's still particle. a chance to to get a uh, a first evidence for uh, yeah. type signal here. Uh, in fact, we plan to run, uh, we, will, we will run at least one more year, and uh, we're asking DOE for money to be able to run uh, one year beyond that, so that okay. we turn off, we run through 2011. And uh, uh, <coughs> it, it, it will take some time for CERN to get their beams ironed out mm -hmm. and understand all the calibrations yeah. and, and, and collect enough data to be competitive. So, so probably this ring runs for another two years. Okay. Yeah, and for those that don't know, that's the big race in physics right now for accelerators is finding the Higgs boson, which is, I don't know, do you want to explain what is, what is so, what's the big deal about that? It's a name to most people. Um, well, the, the Higgs is, is in, invented as a mechanism to understand, uh, as a way in the, in the theory to provide mass to particles that okay. it naturally in the theory would be massless, like photons are massless. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so one imagines that there's this, this field of Higgs bosons out there uh, that, that uh, S sort of like, you know, the first detection of what one thinks is photons was, was the force between electrons, basically, the force between charged particles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, eventually one figured out that, that that force between the charged particles is, in fact, the photon exchange. Okay. And so the Higgs boson would be uh, uh, this thing providing instead of the force between particles, it provides sort of the inertia or the mass okay. uh, of, of particles. And it's <coughs> really, uh, as we understand it now, if, if you took a proton, some of that mass is provided by the Higgs, but in fact a lot of the mass is provided by just the binding energy of the different quarks interacting with each other. So it's not as if it provides the Higgs provides all the mass in the universe, but but the fund the mass of the fundamental particles, as we understand it, is what the Higgs would provide. Okay. And, uh, 
as I post this, I do have to remember that this is for people that maybe had high school science at the most. So. Yes. <coughs> and you should remember I'm not a theorist. I'm an yeah. I explained that too, the difference between a physics theorist and a physics experimentalist <laughs> and how they love the theorists as far as budget-wise. <laughs> Give them paper and a blackboard. and. Uh -huh. So here's a couple accelerating cavities that are yeah. used to uh, uh, accelerate protons to, to high energies. And, and basically what one does is just set up a voltage between one plane and the next plane mm -hmm. so that when the, the, the particles, charged particles, are in between those two planes, they see an electric field uh, pushing them forward. And, and when they're actually <coughs> in the shielding, that's when the electrical charge would not help them or actually cause them to go the wrong direction, right? Uh, yeah, and so this is supplied with a, 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 an alternating uh, uh, voltage. Okay. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an RF uh, uh, voltage that's applied to it, and in the time when they're in the, the drift space inside the, the, the uh, central cylinders there, so they're, so they're not seeing the force between the planes, is when the, the voltage is flipping so that it's at the right polarity going into the next cavity. Okay, so it's like push, coast, push, coast, push, push coast, coast, push, okay. coast, yeah. And, and if it comes in at the wrong time, then it's, it's uh, yeah. push back, decelerate. <laughs> yeah, which so, probably happens quite often, doesn't it, when they're first setting up and testing? You, you, you lose some particles because they're in the wrong phase going through the wrong time. Okay. Uh, and what comes out then is bunched into uh, uh, time intervals. Yeah.